This is a story of how a 23-year-old American activist was crushed by an Israeli military bulldozer in Gaza. How despite numerous eyewitness testimonies, the Israeli military ruled her death an accident. And how, now almost 20 years later, her parents are still seeking justice. This is a story of Rachel Corey. I'm here for other children. I'm here because I care. I'm here because children everywhere are suffering and because 40,000 people die each day from hunger. I'm here because those people are mostly children. We have got to understand that the poor are all around us and we're ignoring them. We have got to understand that these deaths are preventable. We have got to understand that people in third world countries think and care and smile and cry just like us. We have got to understand that they are us, we are them. My dream is to stop hunger by the year 2000. My dream is to give the poor a chance. My dream is to save the 40,000 people who die each day. My dream can and will come true if we all look into the future and see the light that shines there. Rachel Corey wanted to help the children of Palestine, so she became an active member of the International Solidarity Movement, a Palestinian-led group of international activists dedicated to protesting Israeli human rights abuses. I've been here for about a month and a half now, and this is definitely the most difficult situation that I've ever seen. In the time that I've been here, children have been shot and killed. The Israeli military bulldozed the two largest water wells, destroying over, over half of Rafa's water supply. Every few days, if not every day, houses are, are demolished here. People are economically devastated because of the closure of the borders into Egypt and the extreme control of the Gazan economy by Israel. I came to look at the aftermath of a place where 25 greenhouses had been demolished on the other side of Rafa, destroying the livelihoods of about 300 people. And that had taken place while they rounded up about 150 men, held them under a sniper tower, and, and shot around them to contain the men, the farmers in the area. So I feel like what I'm witnessing here is a very systematic destruction of people's ability to survive. And that is incredibly horrifying. I think many of the people here, they try to maintain what they can of their lives. And I think, I don't know, maybe it has to do with protecting their children, that they try to be happy, joke with their children. So sometimes it takes time to, it's hard to hold in your mind, you know, the complete reality of what's happening here. Sometimes I'm sitting down to dinner with people and I just realize that there is a massive military machine surrounding them and trying to kill these people that I'm having dinner with, these families that I'm sitting down to eat with and who are being very generous and kind to me and their children here who are incredibly threatened, living lives that no child ever should have to live. And so I feel a lot of horror, really I feel a lot of horror about Situation. In March 2003, Rachel and her fellow activists began protesting IDF bulldozing of Palestinian homes. Carrying a loudspeaker and wearing an orange fluorescent jacket, American activist Rachel Corey headed for a protest against demolition of Palestinian houses in Rafah refugee camp. In Rafah, Rachel stood in front of the home of the Nasrallah family and knelt to her knees 20 meters ahead of a Caterpillar D9R armored bulldozer. Now this was quite common practice during protests. The young activist was attempting to disrupt the Israeli military's demolitions, an operation deemed by human rights groups as collective punishment of Palestinians. At midday on 16th of March 2003, the phone started ringing at the home of Cindy and Craig Corey in Charlotte, North Carolina. Whilst her husband was busy with the laundry, Cindy picked up the phone, unaware of how life-changing the next few words would be. It was uh, Sunday afternoon in Charlotte, about noon actually, and I received a phone call. And my uh, son-in-law, Kelly, was on the phone and he asked if Craig was there. And something about the way he asked made me realize I felt right away that something was wrong. And then I asked, why, Kelly? And he hesitated for a minute and he said, we've had some very sad news. And then my daughter, Sarah, I could hear her in the background. And she got on the telephone and she said, Mom, it's Rachel. And I think the first words out of my mouth then were, is she dead?
Cindy had just been told that her 23-year-old daughter, her youngest, had been crushed to death under an Israeli military bulldozer while trying to prevent the demolition of a Palestinian home in Rafah, Gaza. According to eyewitnesses, as the bulldozer got closer, it pushed a mound of earth in front of its blade. The heat began to overtake Corrie, so she stood up to climb the mountain soil. Rachel's fellow activists screamed for the driver, an Israeli soldier, to stop. But the driver continued and ran over the American student twice. Rachel died soon after being taken to Rafah Hospital from suffocation. Rachel's parents and other activists blamed the Israeli military for the death. The army pledged to conduct a thorough investigation and report to then-President George W. Bush. But the IDF closed the investigation without delivering a comprehensive report. Instead, they refuted the parents' claims and accused Rachel and her fellow activists of illegal and dangerous behavior. Contrary to allegations, Ms. Corey was not run over by a bulldozer, but sustained injuries caused by earth and debris which fell on her during a bulldozer operation. At the time of the incident, Ms. Corey was standing behind an earth mound and therefore obscured from the bulldozer crew's view. The court agreed with the Israeli army's conclusion that the driver's field of vision was limited, although activists testified that Kori was wearing a high-visibility vest and therefore easily visible. Israel's ruling was criticized by human rights groups, including Amnesty International and B'Tselem. In 2007, the Kori's case was dismissed by the court on political question grounds and therefore did not rule on the merits of the suit. In other words, as the bulldozers were paid for by the US government as part of its aid to Israel, the court could not rule in favor of the plaintiffs without questioning and therefore undermining the United States foreign policy towards Israel. It's now been over two decades since Rachel Corey was crushed by a cat bulldozer in Gaza. Although Rachel's parents were unable to hold the Israeli military to account, the couple set up the Rachel Corey Foundation for Peace and Justice and continue to advocate against US funding to Israel. Rachel was a US citizen with Palestinian blood. This was a slogan frequently seen on posters honoring Rachel in Gaza and the occupied territories. Today, the activist's death continues to symbolize those fighting and standing in solidarity to the Palestinian plight.